Welcome everyone to Metroid Prime 3 Corruption, the third and technically so far as of now final entry in the Metroid Prime series, although, I mean, that's actually debatable too because there's still Metroid Prime Pinball and Metroid Prime Hunters, which is actually different uh, in terms of style compared to Metroid Prime 1, 2, or 3. But I'm talking about the trilogy, you know, the actual trilogy. It's the last one of its kind, of course. However, Metroid Prime 4 has already been announced for the Nintendo Switch, so that one is actually coming out... I actually don't know when. I completely forgot when, but anyway, that's a thing, you know? So, Metroid Prime 3... I mean, okay, first of all, they kind of just, like, put you here starting with the gameplay already, as you can see. Uh, it's kind of interesting that they do that, you know? But, um... What the hell is this? Actually, you know what? I'm just gonna tap this. Yeah, so Metro Prime 3 is definitely more interactive in terms of uh, getting you to use the, the sensor bar controls, you know, and like interacting with objects like what I just did right now. But in case you don't know, I actually LP'd Metroid Prime 1 back in the summer of 2016, I want to say. And I LP'd Metroid Prime 2 back in January of 2017. Also, a new addition is that, yes, Metro Prime 3 Corruption actually has voice acting. Now, Samus herself doesn't actually um, speak at all. That doesn't happen until Metroid Other M, which is... I have issues with that game. I probably will LP it at one point regardless, but... Yeah, anyway, here you just want to like match the code and tap what you see in order. But all of this is the sensor bar, as you can see. Like, what I'm doing right there, that's all sensor bar. All this. Yeah, pretty cool. Thank you. Yeah, but this game, um, this game definitely has, uh, you know, a good amount of voice acting. It actually has some actual scenes. Oh, look at that being interactive. I gotta push it toward the screen there. Did I push it? What? Oh, okay. I guess I did. Yeah, the other kind of, like, weird thing about this game, or not weird, that's not the right word, but, um, definitely different thing about this game compared to 1 and 2, is that in this game, you don't spoke you don't like focus on just one planet. Uh, you're actually in multiple planets. Um, in the beginning you're in this place called the GFS Olympus, which is basically where I'm going right now, right here, see? GFS Olympus. Uh, this right here reminds me of Star Wars for some reason. Uh, but eventually uh, you go to different planets. Norion, Brio, Elysia, you know, and then you eventually go to like I don't know, I'm not gonna spoil I'm gonna go beyond that, but there's there's planets, you know? There's different planets, and it's really interesting to me how they decided to just go after one, like, beyond just one planet, you know? As you know, Metro Prime 1... I wanted to keep that sick music, you know? Samus's... whatever you want to call it. Her theme, maybe? So there's my, my gunship. Yeah, so the scan visor's back. You can still shoot, you know, like... Any Metroid game. Um... You can scan. You also start with this thing called the command visor. I mean, technically, it's offline right now, but you'll get it back really soon. Um, and then for beams, uh, you only have the power beam. You can you have your space jump boots. You have your morph ball. You know, you can just flick the Wii remote up to do a a jump by itself, or you can lay bombs. You know, um, that's kind of about it for now. You have the charge beam as well. I forgot to mention that. Anyway, you want to shoot these things here. Okay, so our first goal is to make it to that place over there to meet up with Admiral Dane. Nice. Alright, so in this game, like any Metro game or Metro Prime game, there are scans. Um, I'm going to be trying to go for as many scans as I can, but I mean, there's no guarantees that I'll be able to fully finish everything. I will try. Like, these are actually considered creatures, you know, in this game. In this game, if you scan a creature, you get a red credit. Look at that. See? C creature scanned. This is a Federation Marine. Red. So that was red, and this is a fleet mechanic, basically. Okay. Oh! I'm sorry. I'm sorry, dude. I think that, yeah. That really pissed him off. Over here, there's, um, like this little... It's like a game. Now, if you can actually juggle, I think it's like 100 freaking times or some shit. Shit. It's really hard. It's really hard. 
I think if you juggle like 10, damn it. Okay, I'm, I'm over this shit. Okay. Um, now, I believe there's also... I'm trying to get some scans going here. I don't want to spend too much time on this shit, though, but... I could have sworn that there was actually something here. I think these actually count as... Training drone. That's like, That counts as a creature. Wow. What is this? Class fighter. That's not what I was looking for. Um, anyway, that's kind of about it for now in terms of scans. So I'm just going to keep moving. I cannot interact with that, so I just got to keep going this way, I guess. Oh, by the way, for pickups, yes, I will be getting every single pickup in the game. Uh, for scans, like I said, I'm going to try to go for all of them, but if not, then that's fine, you know. Male Fleet Trooper. That's another creature. Female Fleet Trooper. That's another creature. I actually don't know what the hell con constitutes as creatures in this room here. These are crates, as you already know. I actually already blew up a few in the first room. Um, what do I do here? Do I interact with this? Okay, whatever. I think I need to shoot this shit. With charge beams. Alright, so this actually makes it fall. As you can kind of sort of see. Now I can actually go up the ramp. Yes! Alright, what's up here? Ooh. Ooh, look at this. Nothing, no, actually nothing exciting. Just keep going. Oh boy, look at this ship here. Ares class transport is used to drop marines into combat zones. Kind of cool that in this Metroid game you actually start to get to see more of the Federation, you know, troopers and everything. Really cool. Okay, so here, um, I believe I need to scan this. I need to interact, press this, login, Samus Aran. Access code 13576. 13576. Do I have to scan this? Yes. Okay. 13576. Enter. Access granted. This guy right here. It's Hunter Gore. Yes, he is actually a bounty hunter just like Samus, but uh, he just has very different powers than Samus, you know? Got a scan any of you? Okay, here's some more interactive components. You need a twist, or not a pull, and then twist, and then enter. So it's like pull, turn left, push. Why, thank you. I think I just need to do this now. To open the door. There we go. And this right here is a lore. There's also lores in this game. Uh, they actually give you blue credits. Lores can be a lot of different things, like these are actually the Federation lores in the way, technically. But then there's others once we get into the planets as well. Kind of interesting, for sure. If there's that many, you know. Um, let's see here. Fairly simplistic room. I keep bringing out the scan visor because I think that... It's a new type of trooper or something, but I don't think so. I don't think so. Alright, I'm staying here. As you can see, it's a fairly slow start, right? Like, nothing... No enemies yet, you know? Kind of interesting. In the other Metroid games, there's been enemies pretty much, like, right away. <laughs> right away. What is this? That's not an enemy, right? Actually, it is. It's a Halberd class turret. Totally forgot about that shit. Hmm. Okay. Still only one way to go. That's going to be this way. Anything here? Anything here? Nope. I'm just going to go uh, up here upstairs. 
Are you a new person? There, dude, there's no new people here, man. Okay, what is this shit? Admiral Dan has ordered me to remind you that suit maintenance and data backup should be done before the meeting. There's a recharge station at the other side of the walkway. Oh, sure thing. I will head on over. They call it a, re a recharge station because, you know, they can't officially say it's a save station. Because that sounds so unofficial. Oh, that was energy right there, but yeah. Anyway, here's a save station. Uh, sure, I'll save. Save stations, just like Metro Prime 1 and 2, uh, they actually give you a full heal with HP. HP, really. What is this, an RPG? Health, or energy, and as, they, as they call it in this game, you know. Basically, you get a full heal with energy, okay? Yeah, so these are uh, energy, so you don't really have to scan them, but I will just kind of show you what they are. This is a large one, replenishes 50. This is a small one, replenishes 10. Kind of weird, because like in every Metroid game, Energies refill different amounts, like in Metroid Pro or Super Metroid, it's like, oh, what the hell? I didn't even see this one. This is a Mega one, right? It's like a hundred. Yeah, that's an Ultra Energy. Yeah, like in Super Metroid, there's like five and twenty, and that's it. In this one, there's like ten, fifty, a hundred. In other Metroid Prime games, there's like a ten, a twenty, and a fifty or something. And oh my God, it's so, it's so different. Sure. In Metroid Fusion, there's like a 10, and there's like a, a red one which heals a shitload, and that's it. You know? Those are X-Parasites, so it's a little different. Cutscene time. Dendrita, enough! like everyone's here now. Before I begin the briefing, let me introduce 242, the flagship's Aurora unit. Ah, an organic supercomputer. Fascinating. It's my understanding that the Galactic Federation's core network is comprised of such units. That is correct, Lord. And we serve as the network's master of it all. However, currently the network is down. That seems inefficient, but necessary. You see, seven days ago, we discovered that all Aurora units were infected with an unknown virus. We were forced to bring the network down. Fortunately, our scientists were quickly able to devise a vaccine. Unit 242 was the first AU to receive the vaccine. We were able to completely purge the virus. Where did this virus come from? We believe the virus is of space pirate origin. Four months ago, the GFS Valhalla went missing while on a training mission in the Klar Nebula. The ship's logs revealed that they were attacked by a space pirate raiding vessel. What is the logic in disrupting a Federation training mission? They're pirates. How could they resist a prize like that? That never would have happened if I'd been there. Then it's a shame you weren't. The pirates boarded the Valhalla and gained access to the ship's Aurora unit, 313. This is how they were able to hack into the network and plant the virus. Thanks to our security protocols, we were able to shut down the network before the damage to the virus became irreversible. But we're still vulnerable. If the pirates decide to launch a major offensive, we'd be hard-pressed to defend ourselves. We must rid the other AUs of that virus and bring the network back online. That's where you come in. We need you to deliver the vaccine to each of the AUs in this system. We'd also like you to investigate the pirates' activity in the area. We need to know what they're up to. Condition red. All personnel to combat ready stations. Repeat. Condition red. Sir, a space pirate attack fleet has just warped out of some sort of wormhole. They're also heading for Sector Zero, the planet's home base. No, they're targeting the planetary defense system. Get down to the planet and aid the ground troops. Stop those pirates from disabling the defense system. Go.
Okay, so we got quite some backstory right there, you know, basically like, you know, what's going to be happening for the next, you know, few episodes of this game, you know, that's our primary objective for now. Uh, but yes, but for now, it's like a temporary issue. Uh, we're getting invaded by something. By something. Salas, get to your ship. Meet you down on the planet. Till we get the fleet in formation. Oh, jeez. Anyway, this right here is uh, the only time you can scan this guy. That's Fleet Admiral Dane. He is missable. The only t time in the game where you can scan him. So that ship just got completely blown up to pieces. That's crazy. Okay. So we need to go back to our ship. Basically the same place where we came from. We just need to backtrack. That's essentially all we're doing. Oh boy. Alright, we got some pirates. Got some pirates. These are pirate militia. Expendable infantry troops lightly armed and armored. Yeah, they're actually very lightly armed. Um, it's one charge beam should do it, you know? We also got these turrets helping us for now. They are on their side, so that's pretty good, of course. Press and hold Z to lock on the targets. Oh yeah, I know. There we go. Trooper saved. Nice, okay. I just keep on going through. Alright, these are some new enemies. These are actual... I'm not going to scan them right now because I need to save that trooper. We're going to fight a few more in a little bit. But those are crawl tanks. You'll see the... Uh, actually, they're very common enemies. Like, very common enemies. Oh, jeez. Close that right there by shooting it, and you save this trooper. As you can see, you're getting a little, like, friend vouchers or credits, you know, by doing little tasks like this. Again, I'm going to try to do as much as I can with that, but if I'm not perfect, then, I mean, you're kind of going to see, you know? Like why I'm not perfect because there's some things are very technical in this game that are actually very hard to do okay here we got our first difficult battle if you can even call it difficult I mean it's definitely a step up from the pirate militia we've been facing alone as you can see some of those look different uh, they're actually armored space pirates which means that it's gonna take a little a few more hits than usual oh okay okay where do the other guy go is he over here what the hell did he go oh he's up dude I'm trying to scan him. I'm gonna scan you. Armored pirate militia. Look at that. I think it takes about two charge beams or so to get rid of their. Yeah, I think so. Now the thing is, uh, space pirates in this game are generally smarter than their uh, uh, Metro Prime One and Two counterparts, so they actually tend to dodge attacks if you're at a distance. And it's unfortunate because I don't have missiles right now. Uh, even though they try to dodge attacks, missiles, as you know, have a homing capacity. Um, so, space pirates have a tougher time actually, you know, dodging those attacks. Whereas, charge beam, I mean, it's a freaking charge beam, you know? Anyway, here we go. Got an energy cell. Does that actually count as a pickup? No, it does not. Um, energy cells do count as a pickup, except this one being the introductory thing, you know? But... You're kind of going to see the purpose of the energy cells much later in the game. There are, I believe, nine, not counting this one. There are nine. So, because again, this one doesn't actually count as a freaking pickup. But after this one, there's nine energy cells in the game. They're not energy tanks, there's a difference. Uh, but just letting you know, because again, there is um, a purpose to them. Okay. Look at these little thingies. Oh, they're so cute. Crawl mines. Yeah, they're actually very simple enemies. You just simply spam your shots, you know, and shoot as much as you can. That right there is the crawl tank. We've already fought some of these, but I didn't scan them because I was trying to save the trooper, as you can see. Uh, you want to go for the crawl tanks, of course. The crawl mines, whatever, you know, just try to shoot as many as you can. You're eventually going to be uh, outnumbered. As you can see, they're coming. They're coming. Just keep shooting the crawl tanks, though. Eventually, we've got a cutscene that will trigger. There we go, that one. Okay, so just simply take some damage, hop on over, go into morph ball form, and let's go. Uh, that's not where I need to go. I was like, what the heck? I just did a whole freaking circle. It's this way. 
Look at that right there. That's Rundus. Rundus is fighting. Here's our first pickup of the game. That is our first energy tank. Notice how they force you to pick this energy tank up. There's actually a few energy tanks in this game that they force you to pick up, unlike Metro Prime 1 and 2, where you could go energy tank less if you actually wanted to. There's a reason why they force you to pick up an energy tank. You need, actually, I don't know how many you need minimum, but they do force you. There's a very good reason as to why. Right, I believe I need to scan this to actually interact with it. Or actually just scanning it is the interaction, never mind. That's a bomb slot. Um, that's just research. Yeah, research in this game, I didn't say this, but it does get added to your logbook. It always says, like, you know, press 1 for logbook. But it doesn't actually give you a credit in this game, so it's kind of up to you if you want to do that. Um, it's definitely considered, like, less mandatory for, like, 100% running, whereas getting credits for scanning creatures and or lores, uh, that's, I would say, more important for going for 100% in terms of scans in the game, you know? Kind of up to you, you know? And like, in this game, you don't actually get anything for, like, getting this many percentage of scans, unlike Metro Prime 1 and 2, where like, if you complete 75% of scans with the logbook, you get something, you know, like a bonus or something, you know? But not in this game, so... It's just for credits, so you can buy stuff in the main menu of the trilogy version, if you wanted to. That's Gondreda up there. Alright, well I need to make it all the way through- oh my god! Debris. Yeah, so like, like, don't even try going through here, man. You can't break that shit. Alright, I'm gonna kill this guy. And these are just pirate militias, like I said. They're freaking easy. They're freaking easy enemies. So are crawl tanks. Where'd you go? What the hell? Okay, I mean, he was right there, but I guess he just he, he didn't want to battle. I mean, you do you, Crawl Tank. You do you. Oh, shit. What, what, what the have I done? I, like, totally just powered through this crap. Another Crawl Tank? Yeah, I wasn't kidding when I said you're gonna fight a bunch of them, right? I told you. Here, there's a missile ex- I mean, should I even call it an expansion? If it's the first one, it's more so a missile launcher, right? I, I, I don't know. I don't know what to call it. Because in some games, they call it just a missile expansion, being your first one in the game. In others, it's a missile launcher. Yes, a missile launcher. I think it's usually the Metroid Prime games where they call it a missile launcher, you know? But yeah, that's important for a number of reasons. More pirate militias? Okay, well, that's kind of it. Yeah, anyway, you use missiles for this. Also, missiles feel like they travel slower in this game, but they look more missile-like. Because in Metro Prime 1 and 2, they kind of look purple-ish, which I always found kind of weird. They don't really look like missiles, but whatever. But it looks like more like purple beams. And this one, they look definitely like missiles, but they move slower, I think. Oh, jeez. Anyway, these things, I am not a fan of them. I, can you fucking scan these? Arrow mine. All you want to do is shoot one at a time. And there we go. GF Trooper save. Cool. Alright, you're dead. And that's pretty much it for this over here. I, mean, I guess I could break some of these if I want some, some stuff, you know, but... Whatever. Alright, uh, so, wait, what is this over here? What the hell is this? Is this a save point? It is a safe point, which I don't really care for, to be honest. Alright, I'm just gonna go... ...and touch this thing. Alright, so we got our first uh, boss of the game, that is a Berserker Lord. Um, there's actually only very few ways to, I mean, I guess even deal damage. And one thing I should mention is that... 
Um, with bosses, you don't get center to the enemy itself um, when you're locking on. Okay, so what you want to do is start with that. After that first step, uh, he will actually throw some shit at you. They're essentially purple balls or whatever. I don't even know, man. He will then regenerate his shoulder armor or whatever you want to even call it. All you want to do is keep spamming shots. I mean, personally, I like to just tank hits. Um, to just stand up in his face and take the hits. And then hold your charge unit to get some energy back. He will then shoot some more. Oh, wait, not that one. He'll shoot some um, purple beans. Or pur purple beans, really. Okay, once 4R, uh, I guess, launched back to him, his armor plating will actually break and you can just start spamming your shots. And there we go. It's actually a considerably easy boss battle, but I think it's because it's the first one of the game. But that's all you do. So this right here is the whole first section of the area down, being GFS Olympus. We're now going to be heading to Noria, and that was our objective, you know, to make sure to make it to the planet in time. So let's go. I guess I could save and enter both. Yeah, you could either save or enter, or if you want to be like very, you know, if you want to be extra, you can save and enter the ship at the same time. Interesting, right? Alright, so let's examine this thing right here. And this takes us to the map of the game. I mean, well first, it's only one planet, but eventually you'll see that there's actually more. Uh, Norion, Docking Hub Alpha. So we're gonna go ahead and land in this uh, landing site, in the planet Norion. Like I was saying, there are actually multiple planets in this game, Norion being the first. There's also Brio and Elysia. And these three planets, Norian, Brio, and Elysia, are going to be the three... They're basically the three main planets of the game, where the game takes place. Um, once you finish all that, and all the objectives and all that, you get taken to more locations later in the game, and... I'm not going to spoil too much about that, but... But yeah, you know? Alright, so there are three generators that we must uh, get back online to get that cannon back online so they can basically fight the space pirates back, you know, uh, efficiently. So, yeah, three of them. A, B, and C. And we're basically gonna, well, it's time to explore, right? Also, isn't this the place where... Oh, it totally is. If you look over here, there's a missile expansion over there, but we cannot get it. You actually need to utilize this, which... Long... Long-term Metroid fans know what the hell this is. Yeah. To be able to propel us that way. Anyway, I'm going to end it here. Uh, that's pretty much a good ending point for this episode. So if you enjoyed this episode in any way, please be sure to leave a like. I'd appreciate it very much. Thank you. And as always, I will see you all next time. Bye-bye, everyone. Have a great and a fantastic day.